Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Plymouth Congregational Church on Pentecost Sunday. We're glad to be worshiping the Lord together. We're in front of the church where we often begin worship, and I picked a spot where I could find some red flowers. Important to find red flowers on Pentecost Sunday because that's the color of Pentecost, which symbolizes the coming of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit that was descended upon the church on our birthday almost 2,000 years ago. One of the things we say here at Plymouth is that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And so we want you to know that, and we mentioned it last week, that our reopening committee has been at work for about a month and they've been thinking about how and when we're going to reopen. And to help us with that, we'd like to invite your feedback. We're going to send out a, a brief survey to give you a sense of, of what we're thinking. It won't get into all the details of what the services will look like, but it just we'd, we'd love to have your feedback. So look for that. That'll be coming out this week. Also today, Sunday, um, at between 1 and 2.30 over in Pilgrim House, or this and that shop, between 1 and 2.30, we'll be collecting items. Our thrift shop, this and that, is such a wonderful source of benevolence gifting to many different organizations, and they rely on your donations. So if you've, got, if you've been cleaning out your closets and you have things that you think the shop might want, bring them today. We'll be doing that in a socially distancing, appropriate manner. Also, check out the weekly schedule, which we send out a couple times a week. Lots of things happening, lots of fellowship opportunities with, with adults and kids and Sunday school and youth. All of it's there in our website, including our multiple Bible studies. In times of tension, in times of worry, in times of difficulty in the world, we always want to turn to the Lord. Let us now worship the Lord together. We continue this morning with our graduating senior liturgists, and today we have Elliot Erickson, who has just graduated from Columbus and is on his way to FSU. Elliot was in our confirmation class a number of years ago. Surely God's Spirit is upon us, around us, and within us. Let us open our spirits to the breath of God, which fills us with hope. Let us worship the Lord. Let us pray. God of mercy and power, you pour your spirit upon your people. As we worship, rest upon us. Breathe your grace into our souls that out of many we may become one in Christ. Inspire us to proclaim boldly the good news of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
as we prepare to share the first lesson, I'm going to ask the boys and girls to listen carefully because we're going to talk a little bit about what this passage is all about. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 4 through 12. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, all of the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of God for the people of God. That spirit talks about the many gifts that God gives us. And if you look on here, there is the first thing I want you to notice is we have this wonderful red candle. Um, it's one of the candles made by Mr. Parkerson. Um, actually, it smells so good, but it's red. I picked this one especially for Pentecost. If you look, we've got our red docile, and I have my red stole on today because we're celebrating the passage in Acts where the disciples were so worried, wondering how they were going to do all the things that Jesus wanted them to do. God sent the Holy Spirit, and it appeared to them like tongues of fire over their heads. So when we think of red and we light our special candles, when we think of that flame, it reminds us of the Holy Spirit. And that was the birthday of the church, when God sent the Holy Spirit to give us the power to do the things that Jesus wanted to do. So if it's a birthday, we need to have presents. So let's open the first present. Let's see. In the present here, look what we have. We've got band-aids and special things. This was actually mine. Because God gives some people gifts of healing. And I fell and I smashed my finger walking Toby. Um, he helped me fall. And friends that were very good at this gave me these beautiful splints and wrapped my finger and made me feel so much better and helped my finger heal. And there are people that are doing that every day, helping people to heal. Let's see what's in this next bag. I think probably some people think they might know what's in here. But wait. God gives some people talents for fixing things and building things. And you know, lots of people in the church, some of them are really good at it and some of us are still learning, but we all come together as one and we go together to help fix people's houses. That's us sharing the gifts that we have to help people. Let's see what's in the next present. This box is very sparkly. Some, God gives some people the beautiful ability to work with their hands and make beautiful things. And I want to show you some of these. I'm going to leave them out. Some of our people have a gift for knitting. And these beautiful little caps are to go on babies who, when God gives us the gift of life, some of us need a little help when we come into the world. And there are people who not only help them with their health, they want to make them feel warm and comfortable and loved. And so these are beautiful ways that some of our creative people are using their gifts to help new tiny, tiny, tiny little babies when they come into the world. Let's open this present. This is a very special present. This is a special gift. This is my Bible. I got this Bible when I became a minister. Somebody gave it to me as a present. This is one of the best gifts that God gives us. These are the, this is the book we can turn to that tells us all about God's promises to us. But do you know that some people, when I get together with them, we talk about what we think the book means to us and what God's word means. And do you know that I learn something every time? Because God puts his wisdom in each of us, and it's so important that we share it so that we learn together. All of these gifts are wonderful, 
but they're holy and sacred and beautiful when we use them to help God's people. And you know what? That's one of the things we're going to be doing even at home. I want you to find, if you can find ways to use your gifts that God has given you to help your family and your friends while we're all figuring out how to live in our homes and do things in quarantine. And so, you know what you need to have if there's a birthday? You know what I think we need to have? Don't you think we need a cake for a birthday? I have a nice red candle. So let's light this Pentecost candle and celebrate not just the birthday of the church, but all the gifts that God gives us. And let's ask God to help us learn how to share them. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for all of the gifts that you give us. We ask on this day, the birthday of the church, that you pour your spirit upon us and help us to use those gifts to help your people. Amen. He is my light, my strength, my soul.
Our second reading comes from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount in chapter 6 of the Gospel of Matthew. We continue, which we've been working our way through for the past several months. And these are eternal words that, that seek to enlarge our thinking and they focus on our generosity. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 to 24. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light is if in if then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? No one can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, Holy Spirit, be upon us. Help us to take from this reading what we need to take from this reading so that we might grow as you want us to grow. In Jesus' name, amen. What do you want to be when you grow up? Are you still working on that one? Coming out of college, like a lot of us, I did not have a clue what I wanted to do. In our college career services office, they recommended a book called What Color Is Your Parachute? This book, it's a classic, and it, it, it offers up self-discernment exercises that all, when you put them all together, they focus on two questions. They get you thinking about what do you love doing? And what do you think you're especially good at? These are basic questions for anyone who's thinking about their career and doing those exercises. They really did help with my early career discernment. But these kinds of self-reflective questions are valuable for more than just career discernment. These exercises, these kinds of questions, they can be applied to anything, to any area, including how we want to serve God and how we want to make a difference in the world. In the church, we call this gift, di <clears throat> gift discernment. And it's when we ask ourselves, what gifts and talents do I have to contribute to God's cause? And where and how do I want to put those gifts and talents to work? <clears throat> Both of our readings today, they're about using personal gifts that we have in service of God. And in one case, it's about the emphasis is on spiritual gifts, and the other, it's about, it, it emphasizes financial gifts. But really, these readings, they could be about any of our gifts, any of the kinds of gifts that we have to offer, to offer whether time, talent, or treasure. And as such, both readings, they have important things to say to us about our generosity. In our reading from 1 Corinthians, <clears throat> the Apostle Paul, he lists a bunch of specific personal gifts. In that case, he's lifting up and listing spiritual gifts of certain members of the congregation of the church he was writing the letter to. And it's helpful to know something about that church in Corinth. And what's most important to know 
is that that church was deeply dysfunctional. There were a lot of problems, but the most pervasive problem was the significant division among the members. This was a very tense church. <clears throat> In the reading today, he, Paul, he, he addresses one way that this dividedness that has especially manifested itself. Members were touting certain spiritual gifts as being more important or better than other gifts. And because of that, some members of the church were being put up on a pedestal and there was developing a sort of, sort of um, sp uh, uh, um, giftedness hierarchy. And in the reading, Paul pushes back emphatically. He says that no specific gift is any more important than the other. And that's because each one of the gifts comes from God. And each of these gifts is equally, therefore, equally valued by God. And so we ask, how is that relevant as we assess our, own, assess our own gifts and our own generosity? Well, to begin with, Paul is making perhaps the most important point that can be made about Christian generosity. He's reminding us that whatever gifts that we have to offer, spiritual or otherwise, they come from God. As he puts it, the Holy Spirit activates those gifts in each of us. When we remember that what we have to offer, that it comes from God, it makes us more humble givers. It makes us more prone to give credit to God and to acknowledge a simple truth that the Psalter perfectly sums up when it says, the world and all that's in it is God's. And therefore, in our own giving, what we're really doing is giving back. Paul also says that these spiritual gifts are to be used for the common good. Again, this reduces the personal ego and it puts more focus on others. The common good whether we're talking about spiritual gifts or any gifts. Truthfully, we could be talking about any of our actions in life. When we humbly acknowledge, when we humbly keep our eye on the common good, that just seems critical. Paul prescri prescribes focusing on the common good as a way to deal with tense divisions. That's what he's addressing. Tense divisions. And we have a lot of those these days. The common good. What a wonderful mantra that would be for these days as, well, as we debate reopening society, but especially now, as we deal with the racial tensions in Minneapolis and around the country. Thinking of the common good is vital in creating a generous society and in creating a peaceful society. It enables us to see each other not in begrudging ways, but in generous ways. It brings people together to solve serious problems. And we have a serious problem. Which is exactly what Paul was trying to solve in his own church, a serious problem of division. Let's turn now to what Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount. Now, you may have noticed over the past number of months as we've been working through the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus, he often says things that sound, well, deliberately, deliberately provocative. And sometimes maybe with a little extra spin to get our attention. Well, today Jesus does it again. And so let me emphasize here that Jesus is not saying that we cannot save money or have possessions or that we have to make a, this sort of binary choice between God and money. Again, <clears throat> We don't want to read this with rigid literalism. But we do need 
However, we do need to see how what he's saying relates to our generosity. Jesus is pointing out the all-too-human tendency to put the things of the world, our things, to value these ahead of spiritual matters, ahead of, of, of eternal matters, ahead of God. And in the process, Jesus is warning about how our, the th our things, how materialism can become like a sort of idol worship. As evidence, he says something that's often misunderstood and glossed over. He says, our heart is where our treasure is. What he's saying <clears throat> is that when we invest in something, whatever that might be, our hearts tend to follow. In other words, he's saying, choose our investments wisely. Because where we put our time, treasure, and talent, our hearts are likely to follow. <clears throat> now there's a translational quirk in our reading that needs to be clarified. In the middle of that reading from the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus lifts up a metaphor, talks about the healthy eye. And he's, what he says about the healthy eye, he says that we need that in order to be people of light as opposed to being people of darkness. But what's hidden here in the translation is that that Greek word that's translated as healthy, it also means generous. Jesus is talking about the importance of seeing ourselves and seeing the world around us with generous eyes. Now, when we talked about when we talked about that translational quirk in our Bible study this past Thursday, one of the members who was part of that conversation, she she told a story that this reminded her of. She and her husband they were on a cruise together, and. One of the days they were there, earlier in the day, she had something to eat. And she bit into something that was, well, it broke her tooth. And she had a whole tooth fell out in the front of her mouth. Later that night, when she and her husband went to dinner in the, the grand dining room, she went, even though she was feeling sort of embarrassed, and when she was ordering dinner, the waitress, and she was talking to the waitress, and she admitted that she was sort of embarrassed about the tooth. And here's what the waitress said. She said, Oh, ma'am, you don't need to worry. What I look at are the eyes. Friends, what Jesus and the Apostle Paul are telling us today is how important it is in life to have generous eyes, to see others and to see the world through generous eyes that build hope, generous eyes that help us even with differences. In fact, especially with differences, to find ways to communicate with each other and to see each other differently. Generous eyes that spread light as opposed to darkness. What is it that you want to do when you grow up? Whatever you choose to do, do it with generous eyes. Amen. It's Pentecost Sunday, 
a Sunday where we celebrate the gifts that God has given us through His Holy Spirit for ministry and for building the kingdom of God on earth. And so one of those blessings is prayer, one of those great spiritual gifts. And so let us pray. God of glory, may all the world delight in the work of your hands. We rejoice that as we worship in your presence, no physical distance can separate us. With your spirit out of many, make us one. Giving and forgiving, Lord, what do we treasure in our hearts? We see suffering and violence close to home and across the earth. You call us to delight in our differences, to defend the dignity of our brothers and sisters. When we fail to do so, save us from ourselves. May our lips speak the name of George Floyd in horror and humility. Teach us how to love each other. Lead us on your paths for righteousness for your sake. Guide us with the depth and breadth of faithful imagination. May we see your face in one another's faces. May your grace be upon us, around us, and within us. Keep us mindful that you have given us the sacred work of embodying your kingdom right here, right now. Spirit of love, whom do we serve? Refine us with your sacred flame. Free us from fear and kindle our spirits. Pour out your gifts of wisdom and knowledge to inspire us in thought and deed. You breathe life into the church, breathe hope into our lives and strengthen us. Open our eyes that we might see with your compassion. Use us and work through us. Wellspring of joy, you seek after the least and the lost. Challenge us to care for the vulnerable. We thank you for those whom you have given the gifts of healing, healing in body and mind. May we become healers of the wounds we inflict upon one another. We lay before you the loneliness, the sadness, the confusion, and the frustration of these days. We also lay before you the strange beauty, the loving sacrifice, the revelations of compassion and kindness of these days. Gracious God, you know us by name. You know us in our innermost selves. Hear us as we name the names of those who are in particular need. We pray for Amanda's mom, Sally, and her stepfather, John Logendeffer, for Louise, for Jim and Elizabeth Wiley, for Natalie, our students and teachers in the last week of a very strange school year for our graduates as we celebrate all of the, that they have accomplished and anticipate all that they will do. Gracious God, as we begin to return to public spaces, help us to care for one another. Spirit of hope in a quiet moment descend upon us. As we lift our hearts to you, we offer you the cares that weigh upon us. God of love and power, Pentecost is not merely a day to be remembered. Pour your spirit of merciful power and abundant grace into our daily living. Send us forth as people of Pentecost, carrying your spirit with us, bound together by your love. May we dream dreams and live boldly, love fearlessly with that compassion which comes from your overflowing heart. We ask this in all things. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. And they'll know we are 
I greet you now from another beautiful spot on the campus. Uh, some of you may not even know it exists. It's our sunken garden. Um, we're talking today about the gifts that God has given us and how we should use them uh, for the furtherance of God's kingdom and to serve one another, uh, to take care of the church and the world. Uh, we do that in many ways. Uh, in the last several weeks, uh, Maria Rayero and Robert Costas have been here pulling all the weeds and giving this the kind of TLC it's needed. Uh, so we thank them for that. Um, so we serve the Lord in many ways, and we support the church in many ways. Uh, one of those is with our time, the other is with our treasure. And so I ask that all the ways that God has blessed you, the gifts that you have been given, uh, to return a portion of that to the work of God's kingdom, to give back a portion of that into the world, and to help support the work of the church. Thank you.
in times of tension and in times of division. As we said at the beginning of worship, we want to turn to the Lord. Well, as we leave, let us turn to the most ancient benediction that Scripture offers. A benediction for something that we all need. Peace. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen.